Welcome to Cole's World of Mathematics, where math is made simple and clear. In this video, I'm going to take a look at seven SAT math questions that can be done very quickly and effectively in Desmos. They're going to deal with single variable equations and questions that ask for the number of solutions or the type of solutions. So here we go. This SAT math question is obviously a single variable equation and it could be done by hand. However, I think it can be done more quickly using Desmos. All right, we've got an equation. We would need to solve for x, plug x in, and then subtract 3 to come up with our answer. So the way you can use Desmos to make this quicker, plug in the left-hand side of the equation and the first one. Then take the right-hand side of the equation, plug that in, and then you can see the point of intersection. The point of intersection is going to give you the x value of that equation when it is solved. So 11 and a half is my x, 11 and a half minus 3. Most of you are going to be able to do that in your head. It's 8 and a half. But if you needed to, you could even use Desmos and subtract the 11 and a half minus 3 gives you 8 and a half. All right, that real easy for most people is going to be that 17 over 2. But again, if you weren't quite sure, 17 over 2. And then it shows you, yes, that is 8.5. So um, not only does Desmos allow you to graph and find um, the solution to equations very quickly, it also allows you just to do basic arithmetic in there as well. This is another good question to use Desmos on because it's asking for um, if the equation has no solution. All right, so if you understand about graphing and your linear equations, if you end up with parallel lines, you have no solution because the two lines are not intersecting. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put the left-hand side in Desmos, and then we're going to put the right-hand side in Desmos. When you put that B minus 2 parentheses X in there, um, it asks you if you want to add the slider for B because B is going to be you know a number that we're going to change. So yes, we do want to do that. And then we can't just put 8. If you just put 8 in, you know, nothing happens, okay? So when you have a single number, you're going to have to enter y equals 8 on this one. All right, so clearly that y equals 8 is that green line. The purple line is this. Now, yes, I could go around and slide and all this kind of stuff and try to get them parallel and all that kind of stuff. Kind of hard, all right? It's a multiple choice, so it's going to be a lot easier. Come back up here and just plug in every one of your choices. Start with the first one, 2. If I plug in 2, we can see that the purple line and the green line are parallel, so I got lucky it was A on this one because it's those two lines are parallel, so it is a no solution. Had that not worked, if I plug in 4, I can clearly see they intersect, so there would be a solution. If it B was 6, they intersect. If B is 10, they intersect. So with B being 2, the two lines are parallel which then is no solution, so the answer is A. Whenever an SAT math question asks for um, if the equation has infinitely many solutions or has no solutions, those are always definitely really good questions to use Desmos with. We can see here that it's wanting us to find the value of A and B. All right, algebraically, this can take pretty long. Doing it in Desmos, it's really quick. All right, so again, we're going to do the same pattern that we've been doing. That which is on the left-hand side of the equation is going to go in. So we've got a times 3 minus x minus that b, and it's asking me, do I want sliders for a and b? And so the answer is yes, I want sliders for both of those. When I put what's on the right-hand side in, negative 1 minus 2x, all right, so again, we can clearly see where those two lines are. Okay, now, again, we could slide around and try and see what happens here. I want infinitely many solutions, which means I need both of those lines being right on top of each other, okay? So again, instead of playing the guessing game, it's multiple choice, plug in two for A and B for one, and we can see they're parallel, so this would be a no solution, but the question wants infinitely many solutions, so I've gotta get it so that the lines are on top of each other. So A was not the right answer. Um, try B, says A is 2, and then it says B is 7. So I do that, and then now they're the same line. So if I erase the one, there's the purple line, there's the blue line, purple line, blue line. So they are clearly the same line here. I have infinitely many solutions, so B is the correct answer.
Here's another good SAT math question, which could, could easily be done with Desmos. Could you solve this equation by hand? Yes. The question is, how fast are you, and are you going to make a mistake? All right, so if you are going to choose to do Desmos with this, the thing you have to know is that that P, if you try to solve this equation, it's a single variable and it has one variable in there, but Desmos is going to think P is a slider. If, so if I were to start typing in two parentheses, P, all right, see, as soon as I put that P in there, it asks for a slider. Well, really, this is an equation, and it should be X's, like we are used to seeing X's there. If I change the variable to X, all right, then it doesn't ask me for a slider, which is good. So I'm going to go ahead and put that left-hand side in, remembering to use X, all right, and then on the right-hand side, I have the 5P. Again, I'm going to replace that with 5X, all right, and then if you needed to zoom in, you really wouldn't have to, though, but that point of intersection right there is going to be 1.2, so it's the solution. Um, but again, this one, you could have solved this by hand and been just fine, but if you want to be quicker and probably more accurate, make sure that you understand you got to use X for those P's, put in the left-hand side of the equation, put it on the right-hand side of the equation, and then wherever they intersect, that's going to be your value for X or the solution to the equation. All right, this SAT math question, very similar to one that we had done earlier. Again, could be done by hand, but the question is, how fast are you and how accurate are you? So if you want to use Desmos, you might as well take advantage of it. Um, that one half in there also sometimes scares people, so Desmos is going to work just fine. I need to solve this equation, solve it for x, and then take x and plug it back into this 8x minus 1. Okay, so... We're going to put the left-hand side of the equation in first, so I'm going to have that 4x minus. And if I didn't want to do a 1 half, I could do a 0.5 right there. doesn't make any difference. All right, and then I, again, we've got to remember a single number on that right-hand side. I can't put in negative 5. It's not going to do anything. So I'm going to have to remember y equals negative 5. Then I've got my second line there. Okay, we can clearly see the point of intersection. All right, and then that did give me a decimal, negative 1.125. Again, you're using Desmos. You don't need to grab a separate calculator, even though you are allowed to have it. So if I wanted to work that out, 8 times negative 1.125, which was the intersection point. We can come back over here and look at it again. There it is. All right, and then minus 1, and let Desmos work as a regular calculator there for you so that you can see that D negative 10 is the final answer. Here's another good example of a question you would want to use Desmos for. Again, anytime you see the question and it says, if the equation has infinitely many solutions, what is the value of A? If it has no solutions, what's the value of A? Okay, you look at the expression, that's pretty complicated. So as soon as it asks for infinitely many solutions, no solution, definitely think Desmos. So you're going to put that left-hand side of the equation in Desmos, so 4x plus 12. Then I'm going to put the right-hand side in. I'm going to do that a parentheses x plus 3, and then divided by 2. I can put the whole thing in, and it's going to repeatedly ask me for that slider. For a, we want the slider. All right, and again, just as we had done in an earlier example, you could move this around. All right, but I want infinitely many solutions. This one does seem to line up and, and really good, so I could run the slider on this one. But there again, if it's too hard to do that, just plug each one of those values in for A. It's a multiple choice question. There's zero. All right, didn't work. They intersect. When I plug in three, they intersect again. When I plug in eight, they are the same line because I can take the purple line away and you can see green line, purple line. Okay, um, this one, though, as you saw, did, you know, like because it was a nice whole number of 8, moving my slider, I did get to 8. All right, so if this question had been a free response and not multiple choice, you would have had to have run the slider, and this one would have worked out really nice because it wasn't a whole number there. So answer here on this one is C, 8. In this question, it's asking for how many solutions so again, another really good question to put in Desmos because you can do it really quickly. Even though this equation is relatively simple, 
it's still probably going to be done faster in Desmos. All right. Um, the thing here you have to know is if I put the left hand side in and the right hand side, what am I looking for? If they the two lines would cross, it's exactly one. If they cross in two places, lines do not. But if it did cross in two places, I would have two solutions. If they are the same line, there's infinitely many. And if they are parallel, there's zero. So you can plug it in, see what you get probably faster than you can if you solve this. So I need 12 times x minus 3 in the left. So 12x minus 3 there on the left-hand side of the equation. The other one was a negative 3x plus 12. So negative 3x plus 12. All right, minus my talking. That would have been really fast, okay? I can clearly see they cross. They cross in one point. It did not ask for what the solution is. It asked for how many. It crosses in only one spot, so it's exactly one solution.